good evening. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Engineer David Salilu Invazi. I'm the Deputy Executive Director of Kampala Capital City Authority. Thank you for having me here. We have a city which is growing, a population which is growing, and uh, all of us are building infrastructure. So uh, I want us to talk about the opportunities around public services that KCCA is responsible for, and uh, what's available for our investment partners on the market, what you're doing, and what the opportunities are. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, as you all know, Kampala is the capital of Uganda, and uh, Kampala Capital City Authority manages the capital on behalf of government. What do we try to do? We try to set up the minimum infrastructure platform to attract investors and make sure the cost of doing business is lowered. The uh, hard infrastructure which we provide and soft infrastructure. The hard infrastructure government is deploying resources towards that and it also attracts the private sector to also provide some resources. Then there's also the soft infrastructure where we reduce the regulatory bureaucracy so that the business is made easy. Now when it comes to the hard infrastructure, of course we are looking at mainly roads, drainage, uh, street lighting, and all. Uh, I would say in the pipeline we have about uh, almost a billion dollars of ongoing and in-pipeline projects that we are trying to implement. Uh, about $300 million is financed by the African Development Bank, so you can come as a contractor and be able to bid for this work. Especially for the World Bank financing, we have $150 million that we're tendering out right now, and contractors are free and available to come. There's a project we're preparing, about, it's about $275 million, uh, financed by UKF and implemented by Colas. That's a project in the pipeline that we're trying to implement. We also want to be able to implement a street lighting project so, so that we can open up the night economy. The other projects uh, like uh, improving the drainage for pl flood protection, uh, executing flyovers in the city, and also undertaking the bus rapid transit. Now when it comes to public-private partnerships, we have a number of initiatives we're doing. Some of these are in West Energy. Uh, West Energy then street lighting. People want to install street lights and recover the investment through advertising. We want to develop a modern marina at Gava and also a passenger terminal at uh, Port Bell. We're looking at development of two, two markets in every division. These have income streams and actually the private sector can come and invest. There is a SkyTrain project, which is a, an elevated light rail project, which we are trying to implement, again using private sector resources. It's going to be private investment. There's also the, the Kampal Elevated Expressway project, which we're trying to implement again. It's going to be a private investment because it will be user pay, I mean implementing the user pay principle. We have a number of slums in the city, over 10 slums, where high value land is being constrained from development by low value structures. We can be able to unlock that. And also in real estate. So in terms of regulatory improvements, we're trying to make sure we go to smart arrangements of paying for services. So you can actually pay your licenses online, you can pay your building permit online, your development permit online. So those are some of the few issues we're trying to implement to ease the cost of doing business and make Kampala a livable city. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm not sure if anybody was adding, but I think I added more than two and a half to three billion dollars worth of projects in, uh, in, 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 in just Kampala alone. And remember, Honorable told us earlier about the different cities. So I'm just trying to highlight how this conversation goes. Now, Thank you so much, moderator. I have a small question, and I direct it to I would like David you, I, I would like you to introduce yourself because it's critical that we understand. Okay. And I know why. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe uh, I wanted to introduce myself later, but me, let me do it now. My name is Joseph Kavacheza. I come from Rwanda. Not Uganda. When I say Rwanda and the Uganda, people tend to confuse. We, we, we are we, neighbors, we, yes. And, remember uh, the. I, uh, Sorry? The, the borders were colonial decisions. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I work with the High Commission here. I oversee trade and investment matters. Uh, the small question I have for Engineer David, uh, you know, uh, infrastructures, especially roads, uh, those that are most expensive and uh, private people don't want to come in free. But you talked of uh, user pay type of roads. Who invests in these? Uh, I, I was thinking of a highway from Kampara to Kigali on a private user way, uh, a private investor coming in, putting it up. I think 
that would relieve the burden from government. Are there private investors willing to come into <gasps> developing such projects? Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, we'll park that question and have an answer. There's another question over here. It's to this side. Uh, thank you. My name is Anne Kazungo Kwera. I'm a co-founder of a little known charity that is doing some work in Uganda. It's called Light Empowerment Foundation. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask uh, Dr. Louis Mbazi, um, I noticed you talked a lot about ongoing projects in Kampala City, street lighting, express highways, ETC. Uh, I would have loved to hear more about improvements in walkways that allow uh, for disability access. Um, those of you who've worked in Kampala, you know how difficult it is, especially for disabled, to access the roadways, let alone for the pedestrians to walk safely on the streets without uh, being knocked by our famous border borders. Um, I personally love outdoors. And one thing I've appreciated living in London is that you can actually uh, jog on the streets safely without any fear of being knocked by a bus or anything like that. Um, so it's something I, I would have wanted to hear you uh, talk about. Also, promoting green spaces for families to, you know, uh, children playgrounds. In London, it's very easy to go to an outdoor space and find a small gym, and you know, which I found also very friendly. Uh, so those are some of the initiatives I thought you could also uh, include in your plans. However, I must say I miss Kampala's border border. <laughs> Recently, when I lost my phone on a bus, I just imagined that if I was in Kampala, I would have jumped on a border border and I've, I would have found <laughs> the bus. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. There's one more question over there. As I go to the question, I think engineer will also talk about we have our car free day in Kampala. When is that? The car free day in. Yes, so. We... Thank you very much. My name is Robert Kovma, a very passionate and patriotic Ugandan. Um, first and foremost, there have been very many success stories in Uganda these days, which is very, very encouraging, especially reflected by all the representatives who have come here and have given us very, very good news. Um, for people who haven't been to Uganda, Uganda has the best temperature all year round. So that when you're, when you're coming from Uganda and the pilot says, the temperature around is about six degrees, you feel, oh my God, I've come to, the, to this kind of... But in Uganda, it's guaranteed. My question is twofold. Um, first and foremost, uh, engineer. I think um, the previous lady has mentioned a lot about um, what I wanted to say. But there's even a saying in Uganda, Kampala or It's because of the kind of um, attitude or culture that is there that really needs, when, apart from the, the infrastructure improvements, I think there's also a human um, resource um, uh, component that needs to be addressed in educating people on how to um, you know, how to use even these, you know, these resources, because you see border borders these days, they decide to go wherever they want to. Enforcement, enforcement is, is nowhere. And I think there's also um, a duplication of effort between KCCA enforcement and also NEMA, because um, you wake up one morning, there's a judge next door to you making so much noise and you don't know who to report to, and if, there's, if it's also gonna be, um, be addressed. Um, the other component is um, the labor. Uh, again, Uganda has a very, very young population. Madam Minister um, for, for Labor, what are we doing for these young kids? Because that's the reason why we have a proliferation of border borders in the country. Um, everybody seems to be looking for um, work through uh, border border. And even when you go down, downtown, you find that there are so many kids. If you drive around, people are playing Ludo in the morning. What, what are we doing about the, the, this, uh, the young population? Thank you. I don't remember the people who 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 asked the questions, but I'll go right straight to the questions. You're, for, you're forgiven. Thank you. <laughs> I apologize. Now, the issue of whether the private sector can really invest in roads, uh, we have a number of examples. I'll begin with, uh, okay, this is like a hypothetical. Look at the company of Express where government borrowed money and the private, and the road users actually, the first charge of the money being collected is going towards repaying the loan. 
So government borrowed money from China Exim Bank. That money, whatever toll collections we make, we put them in an escrow account, take off the operating costs, and they go, they, they, their balance is, is, goes towards uh, loan service. Government provides the subsidy to be able to cover that up. Now, why we are trying to seek the private sector, government doesn't have the money to provide the infrastructure we need now, and we cannot wait for forever. Now, if you go to Nairobi, Nairobi, they have this system of elevated highways. These are, these are, this is purely private investment, and whoever uses that highway pays. And it can be modeled, and somebody can come and invest, and it can recover the investment over an agreed concession period, and. The, the city gets rid of the traffic jam. Users who don't want to sit in jams can be able to pay and enjoy journey, journey certainty. If you want to get the airport in 30 minutes, you get there in 30 minutes. You don't, you don't have to wait for an hour or three hours even miss your flight. So that's the model on which we're trying to pick it up. And we're not short of interested suitors who will be able to take it on. And another project which we're implementing, again, it's going to be a private investment, is the elevated light rail project. Now, our plan in the future is to make sure we get rid of border borders in the city. So that border borders stop being the main source of people movement in the city. If we do the elevated light rail, we shall be able to say border borders get out of the city, users have an alternative. It becomes like a bus rapid transit, people can pay for use, and the investment is recovered through user charges. Now, when we go to the issues of walkways, uh, disability facilities, green spaces, all the new roads we're implementing, either using World Bank funding or African Development Bank, okay, borrowed facilities, or even government of Uganda facilities, must have walkways embedded and uh, disability facilities also provided. Previously, this wasn't the case, but all new infrastructure, new, all new infrastructure we're implementing, are, it's a requirement they must have these facilities provided. Now, I'll give you an example. The flyover phase one, we're going to acquire the where, where the electoral commission is. It's go, going to be converted into a green space so the public can be able to enjoy it. Of course, due to impunity, most of the green spaces have been occupied and taken over. But moving forward, we're trying to recover them. Then border borders. The issue of border borders is a serious issue. The main vehicle of crime in the city is border borders. Uh, most biggest source of accidents in the city is border borders. About 10 people die every day due to border border, border, border activities. So we're trying to get rid of border borders where we're heading in the future. It may be a source of comfort now, but you don't know what's happening to the innocent public who don't know that these riders are not trained to be on the roads. So we're moving, trying to move towards streamlining border border activities in the city. Now the car free day, uh, as you know, Kampala has, Kampala has the, is one of the most polluted cities in the in the in the world. I should speak at the moment. Now this car free day, free day concept is intended to promote clean air, encourage walking, so that people can be able to know that we can begin to reduce the, I mean, improve the air quality standards in the city. So the air car free day is going to be on the 7th of September 2024, and we're going to begin encourage, encouraging people to ride to work, walk to work, so that they can be able to reduce the pollution in the city. And then the issue of misuse of facilities. Again, this goes to mindset change. People need to become responsible. Users need to become responsible. Why should a border border ride on a walkway? Why should somebody build in a green space? So we we are holding a number of awareness campaigns so that people know that they need to become responsible to improve the quality of life in the city. I guess I've tried to cover most of the questions that Thank were asked. Thank you. I, I wanted to touch a little bit about uh, mass transport, because I, I did hear sometime in a report that we needed about 3,000 buses for mass transport to fix Kampala mass transport. Was that a true number? Uh, of course, we signed off a concession agreement with a company called Metu, which is supposed to deploy about 2,000 buses in the city. Uh, of course, the challenge with that is that if we don't build dedicated bus lanes, it will become like a big uh, minibus. So the investors got in some challenges, uh, hoping that we build the dedicated lanes that will help his business work out. So currently, the number we're planning to deploy is about 2,000 buses um, in the city. Just again for clarity, is that an exclusive concession license or can members in the room also come and get concession licenses? Uh, that is an exclusive license. Uh, he has exclusivity to be able to recover his investment for the risk he's taking. 
So he has an exclusivity for a period of 15 years. Okay. Um, uh, another question down that same conversation. In terms of uh, ability to finance the project, is there opportunities for finance entities in here to come and finance with them? Because one of the challenges we tend to find with exclusivity contracts, I'm now putting on my private sector hat, is um, uh, you tend to, it happens not only in Uganda, in most of the regions that you, that, that somebody comes and does a very good bid for a particular service, you give them the exclusivity and they do not have the finance to actually fulfill. Now then we get locked into a 10, 15 year period only to find that they failed and we lose, we lose the time. What are the provisors in those opportunities? Because surely there are other people who could actually come in and finance. I see you looking, for, saying for this, this one might I not look be for my question. minister here to help me. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these questions are very difficult for me. I'm just a technical man. I work on so orders. You, so you're dodging so the question. The let's, honorable let's, minister can honorable, probably help please, me. Please, uh, <laughs> on, on that one, please. No, uh, financing, mm. uh, especially for those who want to partner, then you will have to talk to that investor. Uh, but I know the investor has been looking for financing and collaboration and partnership because the routes that have been given to the investor, he cannot handle it alone. So I know that that financing, if it is a favorable financing, then the, that, that is a welcome investment, but it has to be negotiated with the investor. Um, th th thank you, Honorable. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to dig down a little bit on this one because it's been a question, usually some investors that come in and they have an opportunity, they are ready to start, but it has been locked with somebody who does not have the capacity. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I'm by the name is Karunji Chirumira. I am an advocate of the High Court of Uganda, but also an investor in the sectors of real estate, manufacturing, and agriculture in Kampala, Uganda. My first question goes to the engineer. He says he wants to make Kampala a smart city and uh, uh, making it a very good environment for investments. However, the physical planning of KCCA takes almost centuries to approve projects submitted by both local and foreign investors, myself being one of them. I have a project which was uh, put in KCCA over a decade ago. Up to now, it has not been approved. Secondly, the second question also goes uh, about the infrastructure in Kampala. It is one of the worst in Africa. And yet you are talking of making Kampala the smart city to attract investments globally. Uh, why have you taken so long to uh, give some of those roads, terrible roads in the CBD and the suburbs to uh, private uh, investors, to invest in money so that you can collect from the road toll and pay back the, uh, the, the proceeds? Secondly, uh, if we are to do business effectively, Kampala must be decongested. You see the previous speaker, the lady, mentioned about the walkways, pedestrian walkways, being uh, you know, uh, abused by border borders. We don't have bus lanes. The taxis are parking everywhere, meaning transacting in the CBD where you could take one hour, you can take 10 hours just to transport yourself maybe from Rugogo to the CBD if you are a business a personnel. Most of these things are stuck because of cheap politics. We try to build even a bus terminal, Honorable Minister is aware, which was to cater for trams and bus terminals and all these. They have ended up in thin air because of cheap politics. Could you please clarify on those issues? Thank you so much. Thank you. I will take one more question. The, uh, as the next question comes in, even, even Ugandans are, are investors, 
So uh, you, I know Kano Nakale. <laughs> so the uh, gentleman, uh, uh, sorry, um, there is a madam here. I will allow it. Okay, p please. Uh, uh, when you want to answer, you answer because I get in trouble if you don't. Going on well. Thank you, distinguished uh, investors, honorable ministers, CEOs, and permanent secretaries present. I respect the protocol, Excellence Ambassador. Sorry, Council Kirumira, we agreed here, me and you, that I was going to follow up on whatever has not been going well. So mentioning what is what is wrong back to your home is not good. We came here to say we are we are making things better. So I want to encourage every investor that whatever has not been going well back home, we are cleaning up. That's why His Excellency, the President, who treasures investors, put up a, a, a specialized investors protection unit that I had, and I told you that I trained in this very land at the United Kingdom Defense Academy. I know how to defend my country, and we are here to say investors are going to be protected, supported, and we shall fast track all processes. So whatever has gone wrong way back, we're going to clean up. And so, uh, engineer, be sure that from here, I'm going to, to invite you to clean up whatever has been going wrong. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just cannot let Mr. Kalonji's question go unanswered. Uh, <laughs> the issue of uh, <laughs> the poor condition of our roads. This is a subject that is has even drawn the attention of the Fountain of Honor. That's why you see the biggest deployment of resources so far to date for roads in the city is now on. As I mentioned, we have almost over a billion dollars deployed, ongoing and planned to fix the poor condition of the roads. Government of Uganda for the first time has is going to deploy about 700 billion over the next three years to fix the poor condition of roads. This is out of recognition that yes, there, there were historical problems, but the moving forward, we plan to turn around the situation. So I'm happy you've flown uh, how many miles to come and tell me this? I thought you'd come and meet me in Kampala and tell me this. It would be much easier and much cheaper. Now the issue of... Uh, <laughs> The issue of lack of thorough due diligence. Now many of the problems we have, we have many unsolicited proposals that come to us. Unsolicited proposals for work that otherwise either government doesn't have plan, plan, uh, money to do, like if there is waste to energy, we don't have resources to, to invest in the plant for recycling, uh, deployment of buses, government doesn't have the money to deploy it. So those unsolicited proposals are a major source of challenge. So you find that sometimes you're forced to go with what is available, even if it may not be the best. Now, what do they do in the UK here? And what they, they do what they call a Swiss challenge. Somebody gives you an offer, then you throw it back on the market in case somebody's able to give you a better offer. That's how you test it. Uh, but of course, many times you don't have such a luxury of time to go around it that way. I thank you.